Could y'all hear us on Facebook? Go ahead. Yes. Yes. You could? That's because 50 million churches across America were doing the same thing at the same time. Go ahead. Okay. Woo! Welcome to Trails End Cowboy Church, Harrison County. We're glad. We're glad that you're here live, and we welcome those that are on Facebook watching. God, we just we just thank for everything that's been going on, that He's been doing in church and at home and just everywhere. I do have a few announcements this morning. Uh, there will be no trails, hand Bible study groups. We'll be all staying in the barn, and on Tuesday nights, the Hot Wheels roping. Is back on. You can check with Bo Vincent. He's he'll give you all the details and what they're going to be doing there in the arena. That's that's going to be fun to get back going in if you got your horse and you want to come ride and have a good time and hear from the Lord. You'll get it here. Also, uh, we've got a short safety team meeting tonight after church meet with uh i don't know where they're going to meet at but i guess you can check with in the in the back in the very back and that's really all the announcements that we have and i do have a, a scripture i would like to read this morning it's in proverbs 3 7 and 8 it's do not be wise in your own eyes fear the lord and shun evil this will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. So if we just, you know, let God be in control of everything, that's what we need to be doing anyway. But I'm just excited that we're able to come back. You know, we still need to keep our social distancing, and we, God, God gave us the brains to do what we know is what's right when time comes, so... That's what we need to be doing. And, you know, I, I shared it with Sean this morning. When I was coming to church this morning, I was thinking, you know, we've got all these things that have, have, have uh, happened in the past as far as prophecy. We've got things to look forward to that's going to happen as far as prophecy. But you know what? When all that prophecy is fulfilled, we're going to heaven. Amen. And that's what we've got to look forward to. As soon as prophecy is fulfilled, we can get out of all this mess. Let's pray. Father God, we just come to you this morning. Father, we just thank you for what you're doing in our lives. God, we just ask you just to continue to be with those that are affected by this virus. God, we ask you to be with all the health workers, those that are involved in this, trying to defeat it. God, we just thank you for for the social media that you've provided that we can still share your word. And God, we just thank you today that these that are here, God, they're ready to hear from you. Those on Facebook, they're ready to hear from you. We just thank you for what you're going to do. We just ask you to be with Sean as he brings this message this morning. We just, God, ask that eyes are open and hearts are open. Father, we just thank you for the band. We just ask you just to be with them, just... Let them sing the praises and and the the music God be glorifying to you. We just ask you to be with those that are that are out today that are sick that can't be here. We just ask a special blessing on them. We love you. We thank you. We thank you for what you're going to do here at Trails in Cowboy Church. Let us all continue to be faithful and love you. Ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. We are glad to see you guys here that are here, and we're glad that the ones who are joining us on Facebook are joining us, and if you would, if you're able to, just stand up and join us um, in worshiping the Lord. I picked this song before I knew we were going to have a thing full of church, <laughs> full of people, but uh, let's, <clears throat> let's have church. Y'all stand up and sing with us. Pack up the music, let's have church Let's forget about ourselves, put Jesus first Let's cup our hands and testify about His mighty works Pack up the music 
music that's after Well, baby, said to clap your hands and shout with a loud voice And every time we come to church, we have to make a choice You can sit there in your seats, you can act like you're asleep Or you can stand and praise the King of Kings Crank up the music, let's have church Let's forget about ourselves, but Jesus first You can clap our hands and testify about his mighty words Pick up the music, let's have church Well, in those old camp meeting days when I was just a child The music would start playing and we'd step out in the aisle Living water until it quenched our thirst. Crank up the music. Let's have church. Crank up the music. Let's have church. Let's forget about ourselves. Put Jesus first. Let's clap our hands and testify about His mighty works. Crank up the music. Let's have church. Well, I'm tired of hearing people scream at a football game. Then they come to the church real quiet and praise Jesus' name. Well, if you feel the way I do, why don't you get up off your seat and spirit the spirit and move you from your head down to your feet. Pick up the music. Let's have church. Let's forget about ourselves with Jesus first. Let's clap our hands and testify about this mighty work. Pick up the music. Let's have church. Yeah, let's clap our hands and testify about this mighty work. Pick up the music. Let's have church. It's great. 
satisfied as long as I walk here, Lord, close to Thee. Just a closer walk with Thee. Grant me, Jesus, hear my plea. Things of this 
Ooh-wee. Thank y'all. <laughs> well, that's going to be a good day. Today's a good day, too. Y'all see all that sun shining out there today? Man, y'all got to see the sun shining from the church house today. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Hey, uh, if you're wondering why it's so hot in here right now, we are 100% committed to killing the coronavirus here at Trails in Cowboy Church, Harrison County. And I've heard that the hotter it gets, that virus can't live in your nostrils any longer. So we will be committed to cranking up the heat to 110 every service. So y'all bring your own fan, bring your own water cooler. If you're still cold, BYOB. Bring your own blanket. Thank you, because the rest of them were like, Oh, church house is going to be packed next Sunday. Preacher said, BYOB. I'm in. You know, I believe I'm going to try me some Jesus this next Sunday. I've been thinking about going to church, but now we got a BYOB church in Harrison County. I believe that's where I want to go. <laughs> Man, it's good to see y'all today. Uh, it's, good to, it's good to be seen. It's good to, <clears throat> to have more than 10 <laughs> in a service. And most of those are the, were the production and music team. And uh, so that one lonely soul that you heard clapping, if you're watching Facebook Live, that was me. And usually, a, <laughs> and maybe a, maybe an elder or a lay pastor, but uh, other than that, it was, uh, it was, it was pretty quiet. And, uh, but, man, I'm going to tell you what, it's just, it's, just fun to, it's just fun to be back. It's just fun to be back, be back in church. And, and, uh, and I, I, had, uh, I had something else I was going to share, but it left my mind, so I, I probably won't go there. But uh, I just want to be led by the Lord today. We're just, we're just going to have fun, uh, if that's okay. I, and all of you, I, before we get started, all of you who are watching on Facebook Live, let me see your hands. Hold them up. Hold them up where I can see them. I see you. Some of you not raising your hand. Go ahead. Go to your thermostat. Crank it up to 98. And then you will be in the same atmosphere, heat and Jesus-wise, that we are right here, and, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm excited, I'm excited. Uh, message today, I want to I wanna, I wanna tell you first before we get into it, um, how, this, uh, how this all came about. A lot of times I'll share the, what the inspiration was behind the message or how I got to where I was, and, and you know, last week, last week, how many of you remember uh, the title of the message from last week? Let me see your hands. It's a test, it's a test. That's what I thought. <laughs> what was it? In his hands. In his hands. And uh, part one, yeah. Yeah, at that time, you didn't know it was going to be a part one. You just ad-libbing now. You're trying to help me preach. And I'm thankful for that because I hadn't had no help in a while. And uh, I'm kidding. Y'all done a fantastic job, and I miss y'all. Can you tell? In his hands was last week. And Wednesday, I thought, man, uh, I want to tie right in off of that. I, and I had a scripture that was bouncing around in my head, and I wrote it. And when I wrote it, I, it was Tuesday night, and I wrote it off to the side, and, uh, and it just flowed for about 10 minutes. And, man, it was coming. It was coming. Oh, I was like, man, this is good. Woo, this is good. And, and then all of a sudden, the fountain just stopped. And I thought at that moment, why well, ain't feeling this message anymore? And I shared that Wednesday. Man, I'm just not feeling this. So I closed the book on that, and I went to something else. And, uh, and, and that's what I spoke on on Wednesday night. And um, whenever I got ready to, to prepare to study and think about it, yesterday I was mowing, and, uh, and I got to thinking about, Lord, man, you ain't give me. I don't have anything this week coming into Saturday. Saturday, and I don't have nothing. Nothing, Lord. And, uh, and I can't just go in there with nothing. That's just not going to be good. And uh, no slick on my shoulder. Uh, go in there with nothing. Go in there with nothing. Well, I sat down Saturday night, Saturday evening, and uh, I was like, okay, Lord. And I did what I normally do. I put on some good praise music. Man, I got on my face before the Lord, and I just started worshiping Him. I wasn't asking for nothing. I just wanted to give it. I just wanted to pour my heart out to Him and tell Him thank you for all He's done. And, and you know what I heard? I said, Lord, I gotta have a message. Then I went to then I went to crying. Lord, I gotta have a message for these. I can't go in there enough. And I heard, He's got this. 
you got this? I got this. All right, Lord, well, if you'll give it to me, then we'll have this. <laughs> and uh, he got this, and I, and, and I finished uh, praying. I sat up, and I thought, he's got this. Man, that's where I'm going. I'm going to start looking up scriptures around that, and that's the direction. So now I got a title, and I'm headed that way. And, uh, and I opened up my notebook, and I was like, hey, well, look at here. This is where I started. This is where I started Tuesday. And I started going through my scripture, and I started going through, and I was like, holy smokes, this is the message. So it wasn't for Wednesday. It was for today. And the reason the fountain of flow stopped is because God knows <laughs> that once he's given me a word, I'm going to say, I got this. <laughs> I got me a word. Woo, thank you, Jesus. And I got a word early. So you know what I'm going to do with my study time? Now, I'm still going to read because I read every morning. I'm still going to read, but you know what that would have done to my study time? I already got this. I don't have to study and dig in like that. I already got a message, but I'm going to get in the Word. So he knew me well enough to know that if I give him a good flow and shut it off, he's going to come back looking for more. And sure enough, that's what happened. I got a good flow, and he shut it off. And I came back right back to where it was that God had me to begin with all along. I want to get into that. Before we do, I want to, uh, I just want to pray that, that, uh, that, that God just prepare your heart, my heart. Uh, the reason I say our heart is I'm, I try not to nail it down so tight that I don't allow the Holy Spirit to intervene and to fill in those gaps and to fill in in areas because I've noticed that so many times I'll say something that just doesn't really connect a whole lot to the Scripture. Maybe if you're in business, they talk about dotted lines of responsibility. It doesn't really tie, but it kind of connects because it's about Jesus. And so many times when the Holy Spirit does that, and in my mind I'm having a conversation while I'm preaching because I'm jacked up like that. Y'all know songs and stuff pop in there all the time. And uh, so I'll have a conversation thinking, Lord, where did that come from? And at the same time, I'm going on with the rest of And many times somebody will come up and go, man, that part was exactly what I needed. You know, if we're not sensitive to the Lord to see how he wants to use us, if we're not sensitive to the Lord to, to see if, you know, where he wants to use us, man, we miss opportunities to be a blessing for all those folks that, that, that are around us. And maybe they don't have a Jesus that they call. Maybe they don't have a Jesus or a relationship with Jesus that they trust. He's available. They're just not trusting him. But they know you go to church, and they know you know Jesus, and so they're looking to you many times for the answer because they expect that if you are followers of Jesus Christ, you know the answer. Therefore, you have the answer. And I pray that we're bold enough to communicate that. And, and uh, Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, I praise you, and I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have with a heart that's been, uh, that's been plowed up, a heart that's ready to receive, broke ground, broken up. The ground of our heart is broken up, tilled up, broken up, ready to receive the seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ that's being planted today. And God, I know that there are some here that are struggling. There are some here that are hurting. There are some here, and they got smiles on their faces, and they, they, are, and, and they got you, Jesus. I, they're here with you, Jesus, but they're fighting a real devil in the middle of a, a, of a real situation and situations. And God, we need, we need help. We need you to help us, Lord. And God, I thank you for that Holy Spirit that applies the seed of this word to every one of us, makes it applicable in our lives so that we can glean from it what we need to get. And God, so that when we get it, we'll be able to give it. God, I thank you and I praise you for this message. Lord, flow through me. Holy Spirit, fill in the gaps. I love y'all. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, last week's title was, was In His Hands. In His Hands. If you didn't know the answer, that's okay. It, um, that is all right. But there was something that I wanted to, uh, I want to start right where I kind of ended up with In His Hands, and then I want to tie that right into um, He's Got This. Is that, is that okay? More than two of you. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, Psalm 66 9 says, Psalm 66 9, in his hands, part two, he's got this. Who is he? Oh my goodness. I'm gonna, I can tell y'all have been out way too long. Who is he? Are you sure? 
It's not I got this. He is not we. He is God. God has got this. Psalm 66, 9 says, Our lives are in whose hands? Yeah, God's hands. Our lives, our lives are in his hands. Our lives. Think about that. The life that you're living right now. The life that you've been living the, the past week. The life that you've been living these past six weeks. I've been keeping up in my, whenever, in my, uh, in my book. Uh, whenever I'm getting ready to, to, to preach and I'll finish it up and I'll put where I was, the date it was, and, the, uh, and what was going on. I, I never put that, but I started. You know, we went six weeks, six weeks uh, of quarantine without coming together as a body. And, and the reason I did that is we found my great-grandmother, and I have my great-great-grandfather. His picture is hanging in my, in my office he was a covered wagon evangelist. He was a, he was a traveling preacher. He was a circuit preacher, but more than that, he was an evangelist. And, and he traveled around, and, uh, and he had a healing ministry. So he was healing. He was preaching the gospel. He was holding revivals, and he was doing that out of a covered wagon. And, uh, and I have that, a, a lot of it here in Texas. And I have his Bible, and uh, in his Bible, and his spectacles, and in uh, his wit rock, and, and some cool, in his razor. And I, I almost tried to to shave myself with that straight razor. And my dad came in, what the heck are you doing, boy? <laughs> hey, you, are you, stick with Big, brother. Stick with Big. And uh, you, uh, anyway, that's a whole nother message for another day. But the cool thing is, um, the, the, the cool thing is, in his Bible are all these little notes of things that he wrote back in the 1800s. And I'm like, this is so cool. You know, who knows? My, uh, his daughter was a school teacher, retired school teacher, and she studied the word. There are notebooks and notebooks where she studied the word. And it's so cool to go back and to see the little notes that she made. And who knows, maybe someday my great grandkids will be flipping through and they'll say, first day quarantine, what was that? And my kids, their grandparents are gonna say, man, you wouldn't believe it. We went through a pandemic back then and they're able to see the message of the word that God was spreading that day and it was put your life in his hands because he's got this. He's got this. He's never not had this. He, he, thank God when Mike was sharing with me this morning uh, what the Lord had shared with him, I was like, Sh share that. Share that. You know, if it's got to get worse before we can go home, come on with it. <laughs> let's, get, let's keep it going because the sooner we get through all of that, the sooner all those prophecies are fulfilled. And let me tell you, God ain't going to miss one. He's going to get them all. And as soon as they're fulfilled and we get to go home, what a glorious day. But until that day, here we are. Here we are, living it out every day. Our lives are in his hands. And he keeps our feet from stumbling. You know, it depends on whose hands it's in. It depends on whose hands it's in. Uh, you know, and I got to thinking of a few more, or just a couple more, really. But you put a tool in my hand. You put a maybe a, a you know a hammer and and a in a, in a speed square pencil. You put that kind of stuff in my hand, and and you know all I could build you is probably a mess. I'm gonna make a mess. But you put it in Nehemiah's hands, and he built a wall around Jerusalem. <laughs> you put dirt in my hands, man. I could probably add you a little bit of water and make you a mud pie. But you put it in God's hands, and he created man. And from man, the human race. Oh, my goodness, I got chills down both legs. You think about that. You think about that in God's hands. Our Father. He's not just God that we talk about. He's God. God, distant God. God, don't know you, God. God, unrelational. God, he's a relational God. A God that we know. A God that we read about. A God that we study. He's our God our God and he's for you he's watching out for us and he cares about us it all depends on whose hands it's in really it all depends on whose hands it's in if you hang on to the cares and worries of this world that's all you're going to get is cares and worries of this world but if you put that in God's hand <laughs> first Peter 5 6 and 7 says so humble yourselves under the mighty power of God. Humble means I can't, God, but you can, and I need some help. 
So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God that at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. And here it is. Give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you. Give all your worries and cares to God. Underline that word in your heart, in your mind, in your Bible. Give. Give. It's an action word. You got to do something. You can do one of two things. You can hang on to all your cares and worries, and he will still care for you. But you won't be fulfilling this. But we got to give it. We got to make a choice to give our cares and our worries to God. It doesn't matter how little. It doesn't matter how big. He's a great big God, and he wants them all. It says give them all. Give them all. He cares about what happens to us. So we should put it in his hands. Why? Because he's got this. That's why. Because he's got this. Acts 17, 24 says, He's the God that made the world and everything in it. He's the God that made the world and everything in it. Since the Lord of heaven and earth, he doesn't live in man-made temples. Man, when I wrote that and I stopped with that, this is the scripture that was on my heart most of the week last week. He is the God. And I want you to think about that. Because I know so many times we've read this and we know this to the point that we're, our hearts or our, our conscience are like that ground that's been trodden out. That's the word. We've heard that so many times and so many times that a seed of the word of the gospel can't get in there because we've heard it so many times. We glaze over mentally, spiritually. Yeah, he's the God who made the world. He is our God. Who made the world and everything in it. Everything in it. <laughs> MacArthur notes, this teaching flat contradicted both the Epicureans who believed matter was eternal and therefore had no creator and the Stoics who as pantheists believed God was part of everything that could have been and could not possibly have created it, him, have not created himself. The pantheist view suggests that God was created. <laughs> Imagine that. That God was created. <laughs> and can't bring ourselves, they can't bring themselves to believe any other way. I want to tell you, He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. There's never been a time He didn't exist. <laughs> Psalms 92, 90 verse 2 says, Before the mountains were born, or you gave birth to the earth and the world from beginning to end. You are God. God was there in the beginning. God was there before our beginning. How many of you have struggled? And some, I'll tell you what, there was a time when the devil, oh, slick, he, he tripped me up. Is there really a God? It's hard for created beings like ourselves to believe that there was never a time where God wasn't created, or Jesus, or the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it, it, it's, it's hard to believe because we had a beginning that surely they had a beginning. No, they've always been. He's not been created. He is the creator, has always been the creator, has been there from our, before our beginning. He is the Alpha and the Omega, and it'll never stop. He is our creator. Genesis 1.1 says, in the beginning, God created. In the beginning, God created. Created what? Created the heavens and the earth. He created everything we see. He created the expanse. He did it in six 24-hour cycles and rested on the seventh day. Does this have a point to he's got this? You bet it does. We're going to get there. Isaiah 40, 28 says, Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depth of his understanding. There's never been a time where he wouldn't. He is the creator of all earth, of all earth, and he never grows weak or weary. The cool thing is, you know, it was a point that was made, and I made a point when I walked outside today, and I was just listening just to the breeze blow through the trees. The trees were at peace. The trees still took in carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and it gave out oxygen. 
The trees still took nutrients from the ground. The trees still pulled water from the earth. Everything was working just like it was intended to work. To work, All of that was in complete order. The atmosphere was in place. I could see blue in the sky. Clouds were coming over. Maybe it was sprinkling someplace. The order of earth and all of that that he created is still together. It's still held together. He still got this. He's not out of control. The cattle that were grazing out in the pasture, they weren't scared. Matter of fact, they were all sitting down. They had all taken a, a position of rest, and they were chewing on their cud. They chew on their cud when they're at rest, and they were resting, chewing on their cud because their master had provided for them, and they didn't have a care. Huh. Isaiah 45, 18 says, For the Lord is God. And he created the heavens and the earth and put everything in place. He made the world to be lived in, not to be a place of empty chaos. I am the Lord, he says, and there is no other. I said all this to point to the one who created all we see, the one who holds it all together in perfection. I want you to know that the same God is also able to keep you from falling away and will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. Jude 1, 24 says, God's got this. God's got this. And you know what? He's got you too. God has got this, and he's got you too. The reason I went to great lengths to explain something that you have already heard before is we need a reminder of how big our God is. We need a reminder of how great our God is. We need a reminder that he is not what we have reduced him to so many times in our own mind, what we've reduced him to in our lives. He is still God. God, Elohim. God, El Elyon, the great and mighty God. He is still the everlasting God from beginning to end. The earth is his footstool. He creates galaxies with his breath. When he speaks, stars are formed. He spoke the earth. He was shapeless and void. And he spoke all of that into existence. That same God who still holds that now holds us today. <laughs> Think about that. Is there anything too difficult for God, Bo? <laughs> no. No. What better place to put our lives in than in his hands. Why? Because he's got this. He's got this. You say after reading that, without a single fault, it says, <laughs> Now all glory be to God who is able to keep you from falling away and will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. And you say, Oh, dang. I done messed that all up without a single fault. Man, I jacked that up a long time ago. That doesn't mean that we've never sinned. It doesn't mean that he will ever keep you from sinning. Matter of fact, Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned. Everybody has sinned. So we can't say, well, because I'm a sinner, I'm going to give up along the way. I, I, you know, uh, poor, poor, pitiful me. Poor, poor, pitiful me. Terry Clark popped in my head right then. I'm telling you, i got way too many songs going on. But so many times, that's what happens in our life. We mess up to the point that, oh, man, well, I can't come to a holy God. I got too much sin. We've all sinned. He knows we're going to sin. He was said for all have sinned. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Man, he sees us up here. But so many times we're acting, we're, we're at this level. But our God doesn't see us just for where we are. He sees us according to his glorious standard of what he can do in our lives when we let him. When we let him. Man, Jason, I was talking with Jason this morning, and uh, I told him, I said, man, last Sunday, you said something that has challenged me to be a better Christian. It challenged me in my faith. He said, if, if, if Jesus isn't Lord of all, then he ain't Lord at all. And I went, I still am chewing on that. And so I sent that to him. And he replied back, man, that is so true. There's some things that most folks won't ever come to the realization of. And he said, period. 
Is he? Question mark. And I replied, more than he was a week ago. <laughs> more than he was a week ago. And I am confident Jesus will continue the good work that he began in you until we're perfected through Christ Jesus. Until we are at that place where we are in the presence of our Father and we can see him and live. And, uh, and, and Jesus, we can smell him. We can smell the fresh air of heaven. But until that day, I pray that we continue to make him Lord of our lives one piece at a time. And when we give that thing to him, we make him the Lord of the next thing he reveals. And we continue doing that on our quest to make him the Lord of all. We sing that song, uh, all to Jesus, I surrender, I surrender all. You know, we just sing it. I won't sing it because it's got this note up here that I can't hit and I don't want you to know it. But I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my precious Savior. I surrender all. But do we? Probably till I cross that threshold. <laughs> till, I, till I read that, that uh, sign in Cedar. Y'all come back now. <laughs> Uh, I, I, yeah, I'll surrender it all about that long. <laughs> and then I get cut off in traffic. Yes! Yep. <laughs> Please help me unfold. Uh, God's had this from beginning, and he's got this still. We've got to come to the place where we put our lives in his hands and trust our Father that he's got this. It is a trust. No. It's a faith thing. We have got to put our faith in our Father. Not just because it's COVID-19. Not just because it's coronavirus. Because we're living. Because we're breathing. Because we're walking. Because we're alive. And because we're alive with the breath that He gave us. That we ought to be giving Him a praise. We owe Him a praise. He's worthy. My goodness. He put all of this in order. Which was the first half of this message. If we... Because we are able to serve a God and cause us children, dear children, the Bible says, we are serving the one who formed all of that. His knowledge is infinite. Infinite. And here we are, so small. Who better to put your life in their hands than God? <laughs> put your hands in the hand of a man from Galilee. It's a faith thing. The problem is, with me, you may be the same way. The problem is, many of us take control of our own lives. We think we have control of our own destiny. We mess it up. We cry out to God. We repent. We put it back in His hands, only to take out of His hands what we put in His hands with our own hands the moment things start to get better. Can you relate? I won't ask for a show of hands because I don't want y'all to be caught lying in church. I ain't never done that, preacher. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When our situation so many times turns from bad to better, that's usually about the time that I say, okay, God, thank you for that. The worst thing that could ever happen, the worst thing that could ever happen is for us to come to the place where we say, I got this. I got this. Anybody ever been there? <laughs> Way too many times for me. I got this. I asked Jason if I could share this story. I had uh, shared it before a long time ago, but that, I, 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 they remain nameless. Well, today I said, hey, now that we're on Facebook Live, I need permission to, to share something. I won't use your name. He said, you go ahead, bud. Use my name. It gives it credibility. And I said, all right. It makes it real. That's what he said. It makes it real. So you go ahead. Well, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I'm a, he's not the way he used to be, but any of you know Jason knows back in the day, uh, uh, he, he was one of them that had shown up say, I got this. I got this. And uh, he did. So they were in a bind. This is years ago. Uh, uh, Ricky Lee and Tara, they were, they were, I think they were little. They were young. And, uh, and if Jason and Christy were, well, they were struggling financially, having a tough time, hard time. They barely, you know, barely making it. And they got to praying. And uh, they got to praying about, Lord, man, we need to bring in some income. We need to find another way to make some money. And uh, God gave them this idea about making breakfast tacos. 
So they would get up early in the morning, you know, and they'd fry, the, they, they would scramble the eggs and they'd fry up the sausage and crumble it in there and they were making these breakfast tacos and, and uh, Jason was taking them and he was selling them on the job. And uh, so if I get part of this wrong and you're watching, I apologize, but this is the way I remember it. And he was, uh, he was selling them and he was making money on the job off these breakfast burritos. Well, they done raised about a few hundred dollars with this uh, selling breakfast burritos. And uh, so it, it was coming along pretty good, you know. How many of you know when God gives you an idea, it's going to work? <laughs> when God gives you an idea, it's going to work. Well, lo and behold, who, who knew? It worked. Here he had this few hundred dollars, and uh, he said, man, that's, that's pretty cool. Lord, I see, I see now. I, you done give me an idea. I done, I done got an idea of my own now. And, and uh, matter of fact, he said, shh. I got this. I got this. Thank you, Lord, for getting us where we are. I see where you, where I think you want me to go. I got it from here. So he takes that three, four hundred dollar, whatever it was, two or three hundred. He takes it and he goes and buys fencing material because he says, "Man, I got an idea. I got an idea that's gonna make us some money, more money, faster." So we took that taco money and they went and they bought fencing material. And uh, he had it loaded up on the trailer. Man, he was so proud of himself. And he was driving like Jason drives. If any of you ever rode with him, God bless you. Uh, we went to Dallas with that crazy sucker, me and, and my wife, with, with uh, Jason and Christy. And how many, most of you know he's got one good eye. And he was driving every bit of 95 miles an hour on I-20, texting like this, to which I'll revert back to. He's got one good eye. Where you think that one good eye is? Like that? All of a sudden in the back seat you hear, click, click. <laughs> Woo. Christy looks back and says, Jason, Jason, get off that phone. You're making them nervous. He had an idea. He was dri had his, he had his trailer loaded up, offensive material. He's driving like he normally drives. He comes through town. He notices some of his peers over at the bank. And he thinks, I'm going to be cool. I'm going to get their attention. I'm going to be cool. I'm going to show out a little bit. So he whoo, whips it through, whoop, 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 through the parking lot of the bank. He goes right towards the teller lanes. He's going to blow right through the teller lanes and show off and get their attention. He made it. The trailer did not. <laughs> he goes right between the, tra the, uh, the teller lanes. Boom! The, the trailer hits both, hits two of the teller concrete deals that they got. Hits both of them, bam, and knocks one of the machines out into the street. He hit it so hard. <laughs> How many of you know that when you get to the place where you say, I got this. You see, God gave them a good idea. And they went with a God idea. And they were being profitable. They were making money. Sure, it was costing them something. It was costing them sleep. It was costing them a little time. But they were doing what it was that God gave them to do until the point that he says, okay, Lord, I know I put it in your hands, but I see where you're going with this. I got it from here. I got it from here. Thank you, Father. I'll take it. Man, every one of us have been there. Man, I'm guilty of it more times than I could even begin to count. But the awesome thing is uh, he's always there to help you. And, you know, I just imagine that when we tell God, I got this, I could just see him smiling. <laughs> okay, son, I'm going to never leave you or forsake you, but I'm fixing to enjoy this ride. <laughs> oh, you'll, you'll be bringing that back soon enough. <laughs> you know, when we take things and we put them in our hands, in our own hands, it always costs us way more than we want to pay. So you think about that. He had money. That, that they got from listening to God. And they put it into something that, that he had an idea to do. And it ended up costing them, well, that money was already gone. So it ended up costing them money that they didn't even have. Imagine the conversation when he got home. <laughs> if, if, if they had Facebook back then, it would have beat him home <laughs> before he got home to get a beating. In some cases, it'll cost you everything, everything you have, 
and then some more, and then some more. Band, I want to get you to come on back up. I'm going to share this last scripture. Psalm 46, 1 through 7. It says, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. Ha! God, the God, the God that created all that we see, the God that created the expanse, the world, the day, night, evening, every animal he created, mankind, he, everything, everything, the creator of heaven and earth, that God is our, trails in, our refuge, and he wants to be. Don't that blow your mind? He chose to be. He's our refuge, and if we'll let him, he's our strength. I felt checked. He's our strength whether we let him or not. And whether we choose to walk in his strength or not is up to us. But that doesn't mean he's not just because we don't. Make sense? We choose not to, but he is still our refuge and strength. Always, always ready to help in times of trouble. Sure, he lets us run out there and step in it. And when we step in it, it show is thanky. But you know, when we run back to him hopping on one foot, he is, that, he is that cool water that cleans that all off. He's that clean water, that refreshing, that, that restores us and brings us from where we were to where he, where, where he sees us, where he wants us to be working in our life. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. A river brings joy to the city of God a sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. Boy, isn't that a word for today? God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God is, of Israel is our fortress. <laughs> the Lord of heaven's armies is here among us and the God of Israel is our fortress <laughs> he's got this trails in he's got us too he's got us too I want the band just to prepare what it is that, that the Lord's laid on their heart to, uh, to minister today and if you need uh, prayer for anything I want you to I want you to be able to get it and uh, I want to be available to pray with you. And just know, you know, God sees your struggle. He sees the trials. He sees the torment. He sees the affliction. He sees all of that. And He's still our refuge and strength. He wants to help you. He's going to help you. And whether or not we allow Him to help us is up to us. Is up to us. Oh, man, that's a good song. Y'all go ahead and sing it. And if you need prayer, be happy to pray with you. Shackled by a heavy burden Neath a load of guilt and shame
gargled with hand sanitizer before the service, so don't be scared. <laughs> hey, uh, God bless you. Thank you all for coming today. Uh, it was certainly great to see, uh, to see all of you. I pray that you take this word back with you and that you apply it and that you just put, it, put our life, put your life in his hands because he's got this. He's got this and he's got you. Amen. God bless you. Stay safe. We'll see you soon. Man.